Yeah, hello there, person. Let's um want to check out what's new making the game Wraithbinder, huh? Let's see what's fun. Let's see what's new. Well, a lot of this is gonna be some technical stuff today. Um, this is uh my second rodeo, you could say, making a multiplayer video game, a real-time multiplayer video game, and so I've learned some lessons. And over the last, you know, the, the time that I've been building Wraithbinder, I've been thinking in the back of my mind, how do I make it easier on myself to make this multiplayer game compared to the last one? Um, and how do I make better multiplayer code? How do I make it so smooth and awesome that players rarely ever notice any kind of rubber banding or other weirdness, glitchiness, lagginess going on with the multiplayer that usually happens in multiplayer games? Um... Uh, so, one thing that, uh, w there's a, a couple different approaches you can use to create multiplayer games. There's the client-server model, there, there's the, uh, um, the peer-to-peer -peer model. And, um, I'm gonna gotta go with sort of a hybrid model for this video game, but mostly peer-to-peer. -peer. So, um, a, a client or a server will actually kind of, s sort of, um, say what goes in the end um whether like so ba basically when packets get sent between players they also get sent to the server and the server will process only input so it's looking at input and going okay this you know um the character moved uh basically all the clients in the video game every every single player is only sending their input so as they're typing on the keyboard or they're using their controller to press buttons or they're using their mouse to do stuff the only that gets sent across the network and um, the theory here is to make it so deterministic which means that you know basically you know as if you given the same exact input on a windows computer versus a Nintendo Switch or an iPhone, no matter what you're running Wraithbinder on, if you give it exactly the same input at exactly the same time, it should produce exactly the same output. Um, and that is the basis of creating great multiplayer code. Um, because there's, there's a couple things in multiplayer code which creates this sort of like rubber banding and weird issues that you get when you play multiplayer games. And uh, one of them is network lag, uh, which you can improve a little bit with making sure you're not running things in the background on your computer, stuff like that, or having a, you know, upgrading your internet plan, stuff like that. So that, but that's not really much you can do as a, as a game developer. Um, the other type of problem you get in multiplayer games is dropped input. So um, let's say one of the one of the players presses a button to swing their sword, and it goes this their client sends that packet, and um, and the server doesn't get it. The other players don't get it. Somehow it just gets dropped. It gets lost in the ether of the internet, and um, that is just lossiness, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the right word. I'm thinking of compression. Uh, anyways, um, anyways, you can lose packets. You can have slow packets. And then the third type of problem is that you can have one player's computer uh, that plays things out in one way, and one player's computer plays it out in a different way. Even though, even though they have exactly the same inputs, um, these two, these two players. They have exactly the same data leading up to that exact same point, the exact same time. And one of the computers does it a little bit differently, then you're going to get a, a mismatch between the two computers, and they're going to have to freaking figure out what the heck to do at that point, whether one of these guys is going to rewind and then extrapolate and interpolate back to the right position, whatever. Um, so that's where the server kind of comes in to kind of be the arbiter. You could say that the server is sort of the arbiter of input. It says, okay, ultimately I'm the one in charge that says uh, this input is correct, that input's not correct. Um, and pretty much it just trusts the clients to make sure they all get their input to them. But the, So the point of all that is that uh, that's called a desync where two clients are desynchronized they're they've get they've got the exact same input but somehow they got their clients desynchronized 
What the heck? This is totally goes against everything we're trying to create here with determinism. So, that's what I've been working on lately, is determinism. And so, what? going back to my point here at the beginning, was this is my, my second rodeo, making a multiplayer video game. I'm like, how can I make it easier on myself to make it a really, really, um, to make it so there's never any desyncs, right? If there are never any desyncs, you're gonna automatically have a lot better paved path to great multiplayer code. And so I'm trying to, I, I, this week was about detecting desyncs and making it very easy to find them. I remember in my last video multiplayer video game, it took me probably six months to a year just hunting for different desyncs. It was crazy difficult to find them because I was going about it in a very, um, uh, just a, a rudimentary way. Uh, in, in, what do you call that? Uh, a naive way. I hadn't done it before, so I didn't know what to do. And I was just kind of doing it the hard and the long way. So this is this code here. I'm going to go in through some of this code I've written uh, this week. Is all to upgrade that and make it way easier to find these. So that you as a player can play Wraithbinder online multiplayer. And never even notice that there's you're even playing multiplayer. It's like, whoa, am I, is this a local? I've never had any issues. I never even noticed a rubber banding issue once in this multiplayer video game. That's my goal as a developer is like, whoa, players don't even notice that, that there's any network issues at all. It's just perfectly buttery smooth. They're, when they click to go somewhere or when they're moving around on their, their controller, it's super responsive. So let's look at some of these tools I've built this week to, to um, handle that. The first thing, I created this object called state and state um oh i had to switch to my old keyboard here check check this out before i go any further look how awesome this is this is my keyboard i'm so proud of this thing um yeah so i've been getting used to a, a non-staggered keyboard layout love this oh my gosh it's so accurate and rad uh, but right now I'm having to go back to my old Bluetooth staggered keyboard because I don't have enough USB ports on my laptop. So this is going to be weird because I'm going to be typing and I, I'm not going to be pressing the things I think I am. Okay, anyways. Uh, so state, this is the state object right here. Um, this is a whole bunch of methods that basically goes through every single entity and every single component within that entity and compares it, hashes it, reads it, and writes it. So I've created a little, uh, a little, a little situation here where I've noticed a desync in my video game where we've got exactly the same input and there's something gone, has gone wrong. When I play back that input, it gives me this desync. So let's look at kind of what, what's going on there. So let's, uh, uh, this is really confusing typing like this again. Uh, state. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I recorded, um, me playing the video game and that's st that state code that I just created, showed you here. This is the, the header for all that code. It basically has one, it has four different modes. Um, it can hash. So it can take two objects and create a hash, a number that represents the state of that object, but in just one little number, right? So we can compare two numbers to say, hey, if these numbers are different, then those objects are different. Then there's another function where it can compare two objects. So let's go, let's like take, take a look at two objects and go through every single variable within that object and compare them all so I can find exactly what's different. Uh, so, and then the, set, the third thing is it can read from a state file. So we've got this state file here that is uh, two megabytes worth of data that it recorded. So we can read back from a state file and say, okay, here's my object that I created in memory. And here's the thing that I saved from this file. And we've read that in and now we can, so we've got those two objects in, in memory now. And then we can also write. So the last functionality is writing an object to disk in this state file here. So 
Um, let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this back and basically uh, it will it will show you what I recorded. So I recorded this where I'm, uh, my player is going to start, pick up his blade, walk to the north, walk to the west, and then fight another player, knock him off the edge, which I'm sure this is the clue that will eventually teach me how to figure out what's, what went wrong here. But as soon as this player falls off the edge and comes back, somehow there's a desync in the two move components. Let's see how this all happen in real time. And this is sort of a... This is really exciting. This is really exciting for me as a developer because I can see exactly where the desync is. I don't have to spend like six months trying to figure out it the hard way, looking at log files and all this old school methodology. I can just find these desyncs super easy now. So watch this. Boom. Boom. There. So um, basically this, uh, it, cr it created an assertion failure uh, because I was not running in debug mode. It um, it just dumped all this out in my lo my log over here on this side of the screen. Um, so in the last assertion failure you see here, component hash dab two four five is not equal to dff for entity ID two, component ID three, tick nine thirteen, and the read tick that we read that back from was also nine thirteen. So we've got a desync, and then we these other other assertion failures up in the uh, and further in the log here are actually assertion failures showing you that it is compared the variables and uh, found them to be unequal. So let's go ahead and run this in debug mode and we can see we can stop on exactly every single one of those and find out exactly what variable is wrong. Right? Let's check this out. This is, this is what's so exciting for me because man, this just makes my work so much easier and now this is like a hundred steps closer to Wraithbinder being buttery smooth multiplayer code. Okay, so go back to uh, state.inline, this point right here. Okay, this is where we've got a hash mismatch. Oh, I just typed mismatch. Okay, I got to <laughs> That's funny, mismatch. All right, anyways. Uh, okay, so we're gonna set a breakpoint here and we're gonna run it again. This time, we will stop here, and I'll show you a couple things that I can infer from the data. And, um, and yeah, so show exactly where this desync is. We're going to run it again. Here we are again, and the players, I'm not touching the screen, anything on here, right? This is just playing back. That exact input. We've got exactly the same situation, right? My player's running off to the left. That player's over there doing his thing. I knock him off the edge, but... Breakpoint. Okay, it didn't go over to my terminal here because of it. I noticed it in, It interrupted its state firing up the debugger, but that's okay. Um, so, okay. Where the heck are we? Okay, we're, we're about to com compare these two hashes. Let's go ahead and step into this code. And we're gonna see, so this is move component, right? We've, so the the state object, this whole state tool, this is a, such an awesome tool. The state has noticed that this move component is not equal to what it recorded the move component to be. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and compare every single one of these variables so this is like this move component has an active variable a mask variable an original mask etc so we're gonna go ahead and start stepping and figure out where the heck it breaks it's gonna break on oh I thought it would have been heading oh let's just run it oh what the heck happened Huh. Let's do that again. I think it might have broken. Might have, might not have worked because um. Huh. So, oh no. Nope. I'm pressing the wrong. There we go. I was pressing the wrong button. Okay. I think it might not have worked because. Oh, the infinite mysteries of LLDB. Because it interrupted. That's what I was thinking. The last time I didn't do my stop hooks and all that kind of stuff. So, let's try this again. Picks up the blade. 
runs over here. We should get a, an assertion failure where it will break. All right, great. So I'm at an assertion failure that the left-hand side of a variable is not equal to the right-hand side. We're gonna go ahead and step out of these assertion failures. We, so now we're back to that state comparison and state hash word state comparing back to there, boom! So I can see exactly, right? My move component is comparing to the, the, the move component that it read from data and it sees that its heading is not equal to the other object's heading. Okay, and then it's gonna, I'm gonna run this again. So I'm, I'm gonna let this run continue for a bit. We're gonna get the same, we're gonna get another variable that's, that's uh, so the rotation as well. So heading and rotation are desynchronized and we're going to let it run again um, because I wanna get it to the last one. So we've also probably got last rotation, yeah. And then this last one. Okay, here's where, here we are at the last assertion where we can see both objects too. So check this out. If we go down here and print the, the state of these variables, and then I'm just going to go ahead and, and um, get this into... Actually, you know what? Here. We can kind of see exactly what this is. So this is, this is we're looking at move component D, which is uh, the, the red back variable. And we can see the heading is point, negative 0.743 negative 0.67, so that's pointing down to the left. And um, we go to the actual object in memory that we're using right here, and we can see, oh, the heading is negative 0.004, negative 0.061, that's totally different, right? That heading is totally different, and the rotation too. So we saw the rotation was mismatched. Uh, we've got a rotation here in memory, what we've, what we've computed from playing back the data is a rotation of zero and a last rotation of zero. Let's go ahead and look at what that is in the, the recorded data. Oh, recorded data, we have a rotation on the z-axis of 48 and the last rotation is 48. So those three variables have gone out of sync and um, this is amazing, right? Like, oh, you don't even imagine, you can't even imagine how much work that would have been to try and figure that out from log statements or, or who the heck knows? This whole system where it can record all the state of all these objects and then play them back and hash them and compare them? This is like some advanced stuff right here. I'm super excited about this. So anyways, some big strides toward determinism, which is going to create good multiplayer code for you as a player playing Wraithbinder. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Person, catch you next time.